Hey guys, Alex here from Pokemon TCG HQ. Um, if you try to ignore and excuse my sort of blue face or any sort of flashing images on my face, um, it's actually coming from my screen because the light in my room isn't actually that good unfortunately. Hopefully I get to change that pretty soon, uh, doing more videos. Um, so today I'm showing you a deck profile on a deck which has gained a lot of popularity over the last few weeks. Um, it's actually a deck I played myself at UK Nationals, um, albeit a different variant. Um, this variant is actually only two or three cards off the German Nationals winning list. Um, the only two three cards difference I made is actually post Fates Collides, and if you haven't already seen the list that's currently being shown, um, the main difference is that N is back in the format. Um, now this deck came out mainly because of the sort of metagame you were expecting uh, in the lead up to these national championships before Fates Collides. Um, myself included, we were looking at Greninja and Nightmarch being the two largest decks um, and the two most pop therefore the two most popular decks, uh, which probably sounded true in most places. Um, and this was a deck which was able to handle those two really well, as well as have a pretty good matchup across the board outside of Vesper Queen or maybe Se a Sceptile would be quite difficult as well. Um, yeah, so the deck I'm showing you in front of you right now is, I guess, what people are calling Water Box or just Water Deck in general. Uh, it's got a sort of a variety of water um, attackers or Pokemon that's actually in the deck. So, yeah, I'm not really too sure what people are calling it, but Water Box seems to um, stick at the moment. So, in this deck, the Pokemon line is, let's start with the actual main attacker, which is a Seismitoad EX. So, Seismitoad EX, 180 HP, water type, for two colorless energy, it uses everybody's favorite attack, Quaking Punch, um, which does 30 damage, and your opponent cannot play any items for his or her hand during his or her next turn. Um, Generally the main focus of a lot of Silent Toe decks is actually using Quaking Punch and it's what we've seen on many occasions. However, in this Water Box deck, the main attack is actually using the more bigger attacks to do quicker, more powerful damage earlier on. Um, so we're actually using a lot of Silent Toe's second attack which is Grenade Hammer. Uh, for two water and one colourless energy it does 130 damage and it does 30 damage to two of your own bench Pokemon. Now, the reason why Quaking Punch tends to fit in so well and become such an important um, attack in most sides of her decks is one, item lock is inherently powerful, and two, it can be easily powered up in one turn uh, because you just play a double colorless energy and you're able to start using Quaking Punch from turn one. Now, Grenade Hammer is a really with two water energy um, cost to it, and a colorless of course, it's really hard to power up um, in one go, without unless you started using something like Max Elixir. Now Max Elixir is look at the top six cards of your deck and attach a basic energy card you find there to a basic Pokemon on your bench. Shuffle the other cards back into your deck. Now while this isn't guaranteed to happen, uh, isn't guaranteed to sort of power up your Pokemon. Um, you do play a lot of basic energy, which gives you a higher route to do so. You play a lot of items which sort of burn through your deck, which also allow you to um, have a higher opportunity to hit these Max Elixirs. Now with Max Elixir, being able to power up a turn one size of Toad Grenade Hammer isn't very difficult at all. To partner size of Toad, we also play Articuna. Uh, uh, it's a 120 HP basic Pokemon. Its first attack, Chilling Psy. Uh, your, your opponent's active Pokemon is now asleep. Uh, very useful against stuff like opposing size of Toad EXs or things like Jolteon EX, which might stop you from doing any damage to it. Um, to maybe to bide you a turn against anything else, which is actually just doing damage in general um, on a 50% flip, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, however, the main attack is Tri Edge, similar um, energy attach uh, attachment cost as Grenade Hammer. Two water and one colorless. It does 20 base damage, plus 
and its text says flip 3 coins, this attack does 40 more damage for each head. So this attack maxes out at 140 damage and therefore knocking out the majority of non-EX Pokemon. It's knocking out in one hit should you flip all heads of course unless you have a tool attached. Uh, shame in EX as well. Um, the reason why this is so big is because Articuno, Articuno has the Delta Plus the ability or just a Delta Plus. If your opponent's Pokemon is knocked out by damage from an attack of this Pokemon, take one more prize card. Now, um, as I mentioned earlier, Greninja was something which was um, one of the biggest decks going into national uh, any any national championship before Phase Collides was released. Um, now, because it has its ability of coming back so quickly, um, Articuno actually forces it into a really really hard position. If you can power up an Articuno turn 1, or maybe even turn 2, you generally are able to take 4 prizes in very quick succession. Flipping 1 heads out of 3 is very likely, um, it's much more in your favour than not. Um, by taking 4 prizes against Greninja so early whilst potentially powering up your bench, um, it puts on so much pressure for the Greninja player that it just can't come back. Whereas it, when Greninja, because Greninja doesn't actually play any EX Pokemon, it tends to go one or two prizes down. It then uses things like Ace Trainer, um, for example, now post Fox Collides, it uses N, is able to mount a comeback very quickly. But because Articuno doesn't allow him to do that, it's a much, much harder game, and Articuno swings that matchup so much in your favour. Um, then Probably outside of the attack as the most important Pokemon in the deck is Manaphy EX. Um, it's very weak, similar to Shaman, but it's 120 HP, water type. Um, and similar to Darkrai EX's Dark Cloak, I believe, in Dark Explorers, it has the ability Aqua Tube. So where each of your Pokemon that has any water energy attached to it has no retreat cost. Now, this works so well in terms of actually playing Max Elixir uh, because with Max Elixir, yeah, Max Elixir you can only use it to your bench Pokemon. Now by having Mana VX it allows you to easily switch between Pokemon from your active position to your bench and therefore you're easy, it's easier to get a powered up Pokemon and start attacking um, very quickly simply because you have this free roaming between Pokemon um, just by this ability. Um, it's also useful if you power up, for example, two Seismic Toads, you can swap out whenever one takes damage, starts quaking punching or grenade hammering, and then swap back out again, heal up some more damage, and keep it in a little uh, loop, so it causes a lot of issues for your opponent um, struggling to knock out um, a, a Pokemon of yours. Um, aside from that, we have Two, la two really important setup Pokemon. Uh, the biggest one, of course, is Shaman EX. Yes, it's a weak EX, 110 HP, but it arguably has the best ability in the game. Uh, setup when you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, you may draw cards until you have six in your hand. Now, by doing so, it allows you to burn through your deck very, very quickly uh, with co alongside sort of things like Ultra Ball. And that way you can actually get a lot of energy onto the board, you can hit your max elixirs very quickly. Um, and just, as I said, it's, it's the best setup Pokemon card, you'll probably hear me say that a lot in, a, in other decks that I profile. Um, but it generally is seen in every deck apart from Greninja or Groudon. Uh, you also have one Hooper EX, um, so 170 HP Psychic Pokemon. Um, it's just Ultra Ball, like your first Ultra Ball tend to, tends to be for this Pokemon. Um, it's ability Scoundrel Ring, when you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench you may search your deck for up to 3 Pokemon EX. Uh, reveal them and put them into your hand. So this allows you to grab 1 Scizode, 1 Manaphy and 1 Shaman EX. And therefore it gives you better, better outs to Max Elixir, it gives you better targets for Max Elixir, and it allows you to just set up so much more quickly just through one card in your deck. Now, the final attack I'm going to talk about, just very quickly and briefly touch upon, is Regice. Um, it's my go-to sort of extra attacker in a deck. 
Um, a 20, 120 HP similar to Articuno, non EX Pokemon. Ice Beam, 1 Water, 1 Colorless, 30 damage. Flip a coin if head your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. Now, similar to um, Articuno, it's a 50% chance of giving you an out to a Cybertoad EX's Quaking Punch so that you can actually get a turn of playing items again, or generally anything that is required to attack, like a Jolty on EX. Um, but its main attack, again, similar to Articuno and Cybertoad, it's free energy cost, but uh, one water and, and two colorless. Resistant Blizzard, it does 70 damage and during your opponent's next turn, prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon by Pokemon EX. Now, it's a bit of a soft counter to a lot of um, EX decks. Um, things like Mega Rayquaza or Mega Sceptile would have to search out and dig for that escape rope just to be able to knock it out. Or Jolty on EX would struggle um, because you're, well, you're a bit of a standoff against Jolty on EX, Resistant Blizzard and Flash Ray. Um, or against other size Toad EXs, or any, 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 with a, with a, with the format as it is, there are still many Pokemon EXs which are then unable to actually hit a Regice. Now, alternatively, you can play something like, I think now in Face Collide you have Glaceon EX, um, similar attack, uh, energy cost, 70 damage as well, I can't remember the attack, of, uh, the attack name, but it does 70 damage, and then Glaceon EX cannot take, prevents all damage done to it by evolved Pokemon. Now, depending on your meta, you can maybe tech one of them in against Vespiquin, for example. Um, but I feel like, as an all-rounder, Regice is a little bit better, in my opinion. Um, Glaceon seems a bit more niche. I think you're still going to be struggling against um, a Vespiquin deck. Even with, even with a Glaceon. Alright, so moving on. Um, just quickly show you the supporter line. I think it's pretty standard in a lot of uh, EX decks. That play Shaman and the Hooper as well. You play one, uh, one three Sycamore. Um, arguably the best um, draw supporter in the, in the game. Discard your hand and draw seven cards. You now play two N. Uh, each, plus, ugh, each player shuffles his or her hand into his or her deck. And each player draws a card for each of her, his or her remaining prize cards. Now, it's such a vital card that N has actually come back in Fates Collide. Um, it now gives us an opportunity to, if you are behind, be able to actually turn the game around just by playing N. Um, so, before Fates Collide, the only two cards we had which disrupt, or three cards, let's say, to disrupt your opponent, um, um, sort of draw hands are Judge, which both should players shuffle and draw four. Ace Trainer, if you're behind on prizes and both players shuffle in, you draw six and your opponent draws three. Um, and Red Card, which makes your opponent um, shuffle and draw four. Um, with these sort of outs of three cards and four cards, your, your opponent is still like very likely to draw out of them quite easily. Um, and they're a bit more niche, you'd only play one of, generally of those, I mean Greninja might play two Ace Trainers because it's quite important because it always goes behind. But N fits in every deck, um, and it's just such a good utility card, I mean, even at the start if you just shuffle your hand back in and draw six, it's, it's enough for you to get set up. Um, this deck plays one AZ. Um, if stuff gets sort of dragged up to, into the active position, which you don't generally want it, AZ is quite a nice utility card in that way. Being able to switch around, um, particularly if you've been hexed and, you're, and somehow your hoop has been dragged back to as well, um, and you can't just attach a water energy to retreat, hex, uh, AZ gives you that opportunity to actually get it out the active. Um, and at the very worst case, it's a, it's a B anchor. You just AZ a Shaman, then Shaman again. Um, so just if, if you can't discard any cards from your hand from Sycamore, or if you don't really want to shuffle away cards with an N, you can use AZ and just draw those extra few cards, which might actually give you a better opportunity. Um, I get setting up. Uh, Lysander, we actually played two because it's such an important card in this deck. Because you power up attackers, um, powerful attackers so quickly with grenade hammer attacks, or Articuno's Triage. 
by having two Lysander it allows you to either very quickly take four prizes uh, using Grenade Hammer twice, maybe taking out two Shaman, or potentially even winning the game if you take um, Lysander up two Shaman with Articuno and flip two heads with a um, tool attached. Um, but it's, it's very good, for example, when using Articuno against Greninja, um, against Froki turn one or Frogadier turn one, you could take the knockout, take two prizes, they'd evolve into a Greninja, they probably would struggle to knock out their Articuno that particular turn, if it is turn three. Turn three, you Lysander another Jirachi, another Froki, another Frogadier, um, and that puts you four prizes ahead, and it's just too much tempo for Greninja to come back from. Um, I mean, generally Lysander's just, everyone used to play four catches, Lysander's just as important. Um, with Skylar, this is a, just a favourite card in my opinion, um, I feel like it's really good in this deck to pick, take some sort of either one-offs like Super Rod, when you need that vital energy switch so that you can actually grenade hammer for the game, or grenade hammer or try edge for, um, for extra prizes. Um, it's, it's a nice to have card, in my opinion. Uh, no, you don't need a Skylar in a deck, but I've always felt um, when I have had it available, it's a card I can rely on to sort of get me back into the game. Xerasic is a card which I tend to fit into a lot of different decks, uh, purely because of its multiple sort of uses. I mean, either discarding a tool or a special energy from attached to a Pokemon in play. Um, you can remove Head Ringers, you can remove Double Colorless NG, you can uh, Double Dragon NG if, if you're coming up against something like a Giratina. Um, it's just quite a, a nice utility card, I think it sort of fits in, fits in well, uh, particularly if you have the opportunity to use Quaking Punch. For example, against Night March, you might want to Quaking Punch and be able to remove their DCs at the same time, um, and that gives you the opportunity to do so. Um, so with those support lines, you everyone generally tends to play four BS seekers. I've seen some that's drop to three, depending on the deck that you're playing. But four seems to be the best card in terms of actually reusing all of these supporters again, um, just because it's such a useful card. It's arguably, like a staple in every deck. Actually, it is a staple in every deck. What am I on about? Um, moving on to the rest of the item cards, we have Energy Switch, which sort of synergizes really well with Max Elixirs. Um, if you're powering up all these bench Pokemon, uh, you can generally tend to get maybe three or four energy attachments onto the bench. You can energy switch to the active to allow you to retreat, um, so it has that utility as well. Or if you just need to, if you just have two energy switch in hand, already have two on the bench, you can just move them both to the active Pokemon. And start attacking um, that way. It's really useful once you've got since you can get energy, basic energy, onto your board so quickly. It's a really good, nice card to have. Ultra Ball. Um, generally use it turn one to maybe go for a Hooper, and then from then on it's just depending on what kind of card you're actually, um, depending on what kind of matchup you're up against, um, allows you to get a different attacker that you might need. Um, this card, two cards from your hand, so if you deck for a bug more really, then put it into your hand. Uh, grab another Shaman so you can continue setting up, for example. Trainer's Mill, arguably one of the most broken cards in the game, I believe. Look at the top four cards on your deck, reveal a trainer card there, and uh, put it into your hand. Um, there's not really much you can really say about it, it just gives you that extra bit of consistency. Um, yeah, and it's, it's just probably again fits into every single deck that you can have. Super Rod has been put in there, some people like it, some people don't, generally play so much energy that you might not actually need um, a Super Rod to put in the back into the deck. I found it quite useful, um, especially with Skylar, where I've had an Articuno knocked out or Silence Zone knocked out. If I can Skylar for a Super Rod and if I still have any Max Elixirs, that gives me just again a higher chance of actually getting more energy back onto the board. Um, that I can use to have a second or third attacker once again. Um, really good card. You wouldn't normally play more than one off, as 12 energies can generally carry you through. Uh, three rough seas, so to coincide with Grenade Hammer or against a Trevenant, as I mentioned, 
um, using mana fees to solve do 60 mineral pump. Once during each player's turn, that player may heal 30 damage from each of his water aligning Pokemon. Um, it's just a really good stadium any, any way to sort of bounce off of your opponent's uh, stadiums and it allows you to sort of really screw up the math that your opponent may be doing onto your Pokemon to knock it out. So especially with a free retreat, as I mentioned, you have two sides of them, um, in play with energy attach. You can keep swapping in between them, uh, keeping up the grenade hammers or keeping up the quaking punches without having to actually lose a Pokemon EX from damage. Um, yeah, and finally, Fighting Fury Belt. So important in the Night March matchup, you just having sort of multiple sides of toes with Fighting Fury Belt, quaking punching. Uh, so it's a Pokemon tool card. The basic Pokemon this card is attached to gets 40 HP Pokemon, yeah, plus 40 HP, and its attacks do 10 more damage to each of your, well, to your opponent's active Pokemon. So the 40 HP gives makes size of Toad 220 HP. Nine March, for example, would then need 11 or 10 and a Muscle Burn attached somehow through a uh, Quake and Punch lock. Reg Ice gets 160, Manaphy 160, Articuno 160, Shaman 150 can sometimes just put it out of range out of Pokemon and knocking it out. Um, so yeah, this is the deck guys. Uh, I hope I went through it not in too much detail, but I'm just going to play a game or two of it as well. Um, if it's too long I might try and re-record this. <laughs> Alright. I'll show you a game. Uh, if you have any questions or if you have any recommendations, just drop a comment and let us know. Alright guys, uh, so we're going into a matchup now. We're playing against Marcos Molink. I think it was a lightning and a colourless that we saw. Seeing it as a uh, sort of preview, would you like to go first? Yes I will, thank you very much. So let's have a little look at our hand. Ooh, hello. Your opponent has no basic Pokemon, so just on one Shaman. She's wiggling out a stomach bench. Nope, we keep Shamans in the hand. Let's have a little look. So we're playing a Mega Man deck. It seems that has Headbringer and Trick Coin. And Flare Grunts. This could be interesting. Yes, we'd like to draw an extra card. Right, so we've got a Shaman active. Uh, so first point of call against Mega Man decks. What we will need is a Seismic Toad. A couple of Seismic Toads of that. So we'll grab a Hooper first. Hooper. We'll use Scoundrel Ring. Three Pokemon EX and Cyber Toads. Um, we'll grab a Manaphy now, just so we can get it set up a lot quicker. Get it out of our decks. We're going to need Manaphy's retreat between the two anyway. Um, let's have a look. We'll attach Water to Shaman EX the active. Up to the size of toad. And we'll actually bench Manaphy, chuck Rough Seed down, we'll set up for five. We probably could have played the Ultra Wall down, I knew there was one more Shaman in the deck. It's always useful to keep in hand. Set up, I should say. So we're just waiting to see what he actually does. 
comfortable. Scrolling on my end of my side. From the metric, so we'll have a little look. So for one energy overrun, 20 to the active and 20 to the bench. Assault laser for one lightning, one colorless. 60 plus 60 if your opponent has a tool attached to it. So he's attached a flash energy. So we're going to attach a water to size with him. Use Ultra Ball, Discarding, Super Rod, and Sigma. If you get rid of Mass in that position. Uh, Reg Ice could actually be a useful Pokemon to use. Using that, we're only doing this so that we can get better odds with trainers mail. There we go, there's our first max elixir. So we'll max elixir, hope we hit a water energy. Yep, we hit two out of our top six cards. Straight to size and toad. Via Seeker. Sycamore. And at the very worst, we do have a quaking punch off ready. But we hit the max elixir again. We do have an energy. Onto the side of the toad. Now, thinking about it, I really don't want this Manetric to do 120 damage to my side of the toad. So if I take it down to 90, it still can't. He needs to. He won't be able to two hit my side of the toad. So it's actually not a bad play to actually. Grenade hammer here, take the prizes. So, that's what I'm going to do. Drop it onto the mana feed and a silent toad, since we can rough seize them both and bring them back to uh, full health. There we go, two early prizes. Turn two, getting a silent toad and an Articuno. Let's see, so here's another energy and birch. Hits the head, so he draws seven. Arguably the most broken support if he's able to get that off. There we go, is Mega Man. <laughs> so he does Turbo Bolt for 110 HP uh, damage. That does leave me currently with 110. It's Power of Thunderous. That's 150, which is. Annoying, however, he's only got one energy attached to it. So I rough seize, bringing those two bench back down to full health. I think I will just Sycamore here. Um, this allows me to get my board set up a lot more quicker uh, with things like energy switch, potentially hitting another max elixir or another energy switch, which is useful. Um, let's have a look. So I'm actually gonna play another trainer's map first. Okay. I'm actually just gonna grenade hammer with this silo toad. Because what I can do next turn, uh, because he's unable to knock it out in one hit, I can lie sander the manetric. And with two E switches, actually knock out the magic trick in two turns. Put myself in a really good position. Okay, I'd have damage side so on the bench. However, I would have moved the energies off it. Um, and it's potentially a sacrificial size turn, which isn't too much of an issue. The headlock could be annoying, but I'll just be healing uh, the damage off. Lysander Shaman, which is better for me because then it actually puts me in a less of a position to actually uh, get knocked out. So he has headlocked, he has paralyzed my Shaman, which is frustrating. Didn't really factor this in, didn't really factor that I play against uh, Thunderous, but. Out. 
to save that energy from that shaman onto two signs of turns. I think here. Now this puts me in a situation where, yes, he's unlikely to knock out my fun my shaman ex with this thunderous because of the two retreat costs. It's unlikely to be able to use headlock, and that way I can actually e switch back onto the shaman retreat if I need to, which looks likely. So we look at my net trick. It has 130 HP left. I'll heal the size of toad. I drew a top deck and energy so I can attach the shaman. Retreat the shaman. Send up size to an EX. And Lysander. The Mega Manetric. Now grenade hammer. Uh, it's not really an issue if I do actually. I can actually do the shaman. Again, because we don't want to put sides over that sort of position. No, I don't. Since it can be healed off, it's not really too much of an issue. So this game's just going as well as it could, really could be, to be honest. AZ was prized. I thought as much. It's something I really should check, and it's something I would normally do in a tournament situation. But playing PTCGO. <laughs> A lot harder to sort of do these sort of things. So I used headlock, uh, missed the paralyze. So I rough seize again. He did tame flare grant, so I do have to attach the energy to the side to add to size mode. Um, and I don't actually need to do anything here, so what I'll just do is actually grenade hammer again onto the mana feet and size of toad. I have the Seeker in hand, and as long as he doesn't disrupt it, that's game. So he rough sees, which isn't too much of a worry for me. Um, it seems like my opponent isn't actually drawing too, too well at all. He does retreat and goes for the headlock one more time. Hits the heads, which he misses, them, which means he misses the Tails, which is what he actually wanted to actually paralyze my side toad. Um, and I would simply just via seeker for the Lysander. Lysander hits like, thunderous and grenade hammer for the win. In my opponent scooped. Work tomorrow, guys. Yeah. Water, metal, psychic, colorless. I'm expecting a mirror match, potentially with an Aegis Slash. Good coin, my opponent says. I don't know how exciting this game would be if it's going to be like this. Let's just see what happens. a mirror match as correctly guessed. So it's what you can generally do when you see the, pre the preview screens, you can actually sort of guess depending on what actually types you see. Um, so there you go, there's the max elixir, the water energy to the active. Misses, misses the max elixir, shamans for free. likely to play Articunos as well of course, so if I do go with Red Ice, it only suffice for so many turns. 
it is something I might have to attempt, however. I'm not too sure what my opponent is waiting for. Expecting if I tend to be just benching, all I've got is a red ice. Hmm. It might be the case where I actually just sort of outdo his size of toad and go for my own grenade hammers. He's only got one energy on board, got two in hand, unfortunately. Hooper, I'm a little bit limited in the powers into my opponent, unfortunately. Um, let me get a mana fee. So 
so potentially it'd be a good idea to smash your pad. So I've got an eight hammer, my mana for the red ice for 30 damage. But this now puts him on the clock. He gets his items back, however that side of toad will go down to another grenade hammer. Should I be given the opportunity to CGO, it does take some time for my bone. Not therefore, of course. Ooh, he does go after one of my Pokemon. Potentially. I'm feeling perhaps this other side of him. Will he retreat? He, he switch. Loads of options with his deck. Maybe not. Does attach to Fur and G, Lysander's worry. Manaphy. And he does grenade hammer it. Now the situations he's put himself in now I take out all free energy on his board. And I'll be ending him next turn. Which really sucks for me. The other side of Toad. Need to start getting some cards out. So we don't need to grab them. I could have grabbed something to make my mixes more likely to hit, but I feel like not much on my board. I'm okay. Do so, and I have them. So I've got another two energy into my side of Toad. And I shall now end my bone. This is showing the true power of N in reality. I don't need a bench mana for yet, so I'm going to leave it in my hand. Drop a Fighting Fury Belt. I'll trouble the two rough seas away in case the shenanigans does come. I'm going to grab a Shaman in. And I will Grenade Hammer for a KO. Doing damage to Reg Ice and Size of Toad. So I'm Fighting Fury Belt, I'm doing 140 damage. Um, not that it really makes much of a difference in this matchup. So we get a Sycamore and a Water Energy, which is probably what I need. Water to attach to my bench size with Toad, Sycamore to then play onto my next turn. Um, with Manaphy placed back onto my bench. So he rough seas as expected. <laughs> I think what my opponent could do here, Max Elixir, Energy Switch Shenanigans. There comes Manaphy with the Water Energy. Brilliant attacker and a permanent matchup as I've mentioned before. Uh, the Super Rods, free energy back in I assume. It's lost four already. Oh, put Side of back in. Does that mean that one Side of Toad is probably prized? He switches to Side of Toad. Judge, interesting. I don't think it's as useful in this uh, in this build anymore with N back in the format. Judge seems a bit obsolete. Um, I have no need to retreat, so all I have to do is really attach water to my bench and grenade hammer him. After a rough season, of course, he does get a second energy off his max elixir. Does he have an E-switch? That's a real question, or another Shane? Ah. Oh, he does, he switches into Hooper. It does give me a target, and it means he might have an AZ in hand. Um, someone has posted on my timeline. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Calling me. Let me grenade hammer that Hooper now. Actually, the play here for me 
it's actually better to grenade it's actually to quake and punch the super and I believe because my opponents missed everything and the way my board's already set up I don't think he can actually come back it's a shame it would have been nicer showing off a bit more of the size of the grenade hammer shenanigans um, but there we are guys um, I hope you enjoy my two matches hopefully they weren't too long I'll edit some of it out um, if you can subscribe, like, comment below uh, with any questions, anything else you'd like to see, um, improvements not just on the, the actual video, it's on, on my video itself. Uh, thank you very much guys.